كفايت كفايت I said quiet. How am I supposed to run a football club if you are not even listening to me? Rolfelgetti was tired. Perhaps it had been a mistake buying one of the most untidy ships of German football in an attempt to bring it to an even keel again. Had his instincts finally let him down? Well, trusting his instinct had made him his first million, and his second, and his third, and his tenth. Well, I think you get the picture. At age 40, he looked back on a brilliant career, fueled by his bright intellect and unerring ability to make the right decisions at the right time. However, in recent weeks, he started to think that this ability didn't work in the world of football. Perhaps this mismanaged club actually belonged in the third division. Perhaps he was best off selling his newly bought shares and finding another hobby. Perhaps gardening wasn't as boring as the last time he had tried. Herr Rolf's daydreaming was abruptly interrupted. Herr Rolf, it's been 12 years. 12 years since our last season in the Bundesliga. Young Jochen, the newly appointed director of football, was both inexperienced and, well, young. Herr Rolf stood up, took a deep breath and composed himself. Jochen, by just listening to you, one would think that you were an ignorant fool. Lucky for you, I know better. Look at the players. Are they Bundesliga material? Would we beat the likes of Dortmund or Bayern München if we play them today? Would we? Jochen struggled to find words with the owner towering over him, and before he got the chance to speak, Herr Rolf continued. No, this is not enough. We've always produced good players, yet we are stuck in the third division for the eighth year in a row. The youngsters aren't a problem, but you know what they say, you cannot win anything with Kinder. A sudden knock on the door only briefly interrupted Herr Rolf, and he continued speaking as a group of men entered the office. I am talking about our glory days back in the early 2000s. The team was loved by the people, and we played Bundesliga football on Ostsee Stadion every other week. We need to bring back the character and success from those years, and to do that, we must bring back the men that made it happen. As the men lined up behind Herr Rolf, the twitching under his eye stopped and he broke into a big smile. He opened his arms wide and said, It's time for the Swedish Mafia. Hello and welcome, Miklinio FM here. I know that you are wondering where you have landed and this is not going to be a series about pop cultural references or about organised crime. This is going to be a Football Manager 20 series about the German club Hansa Rostock. And as Marcus Albeck, the new manager, is welcome to the club, I welcome you to this series that will run new episodes on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays where we try to take third tier Hansa Rostock back to its former glory days and we are doing it with a bit of a twist. Before we get any further let's start with a little history lesson for context. Uh, FC Hansa Rostock uh, founded in 1954 is one of the most successful clubs from the former East Germany. The club won one national championship in 1990, the final season of East German football. Following Germany's reunification, the Bundesliga expanded from 18 to 20 teams in 1991-92. Hansa Rostock earned one of the places together with Dynamo Dresden, but were relegated straight away. They returned to the top flight in 1995 and became a solid Bundesliga side over the following seasons. Being on a tight budget, they targeted the Scandinavian market due to the geographical closeness and the hard-working mentality of the players and had great success with the Swedish signings. In their 2003 Bundesliga win against Nuremberg, they managed a unique feat when six Swedish players were in the starting eleven. Rade Pritza and Magnus Arvidsson played up front with Marcus Lanz, Peter Wibron and Joachim Persson in midfield and the sixth and final Swede Andreas Jakobsson as a centre-back. The Swedish players became living club legends with Magnus Arvidsson being the club's top goal scorer ever in the Bundesliga with this total of 27 goals. Peter Wibron became such a fan favourite that he earned the nickname Der Beste Mann, with busloads of German fans coming to watch him play even after his return to Swedish football. 
a German newspaper called the Hans Rostock style of play an IKEA tactic and another paper called them the Swedish Mafia or the Swedish Mafia. One after another the Swedish players left the club, some went back to Sweden and some left for other European clubs as Hans Rostock couldn't afford to offer them reasonable wages. As the Swedish era ended the club stopped being a solid Bundesliga side. After relegation from the Bundesliga in 2004 and 5, the club managed to climb back up two years later, but the glory days were gone. In 2007-2008, Hansa Rostock immediately got relegated down to the second Bundesliga, and since 2012 they are down in the third tier of German football. After eight tough seasons both financially and on the pitch, Rolf Elgetti stepped in and cleared the club's debt, making their large following feel confidence for the first time in many years. The people of Rostock desperately want Bundesliga football to be played at the Ostseestadion again and long for the good old time with the Swedes. In an attempt to make it back to the Bundesliga, Herr Rolf is trying to copy the old recipe for success. All six members of the Swedish Mafia have been brought back to the club as coaching staff and scouts. Also, former Hans Rostock player and Swedish international Marcus Albeck is brought in as the new manager. For Albeck, who worked as an assistant coach for the Swedish national team between 2009 and 2016, this will be his first job as manager. After securing his new staff, Herr Rolf sat down with them and formulated a plan for the coming five years, a plan to get Hansa Rostock back to where they belong. This plan is both methodical and uh, realistic in my opinion, but it will take a lot of work to get it done. But if we manage this five-year plan, then we will certainly have put Hansa Rostock in a much better place than they are at the moment. The first order of business will be a long-term one and it's to improve the club facilities. The Ossi Stadium is actually of a decent capacity, 29,000 is one of the biggest stadiums in the third tier and the training facilities are great and the youth facilities are good which seems to suit me very well. There is room for improvement though in every area especially when it comes to youth recruitment that's just adequate as well as junior coaching. The second and equally important step in these five-year plan is to keep finances healthy. If we're going to build the club up, this is an absolute must. When we come to finances, this actually looks decent. An overall balance of uh, over £3 million is good, but the transfer budget is zero with a bit of wiggle room when it comes to the wage budget. This doesn't tell the whole story though because there's a total amount of £50 million in loan so that will need to be paid off uh, the smaller loan straight away and the bigger loan once we get back to the Bundesliga. This makes our financial position a little bit more insecure and our chances to sign play are smaller of course. The third step is to create a unique club DNA and, uh, and this is something we'll get back to at a later point we will start this by looking at the actual club vision to see what the board wants from us straight away. The club vision seems to be in line with what we are looking to do, even though it seems to be a bit modest. Fine players under the age of 23 for the first team will suit me very well, and it seems like a sound financial decision to work within the wage budget. Their actual ambitions doesn't really seem to uh, be in line with what we want to do, but we will, as I said, try to reach the Bundesliga and become a decent team there fairly soon. When it comes to actual squad building, we have two things to take into consideration. Uh, firstly, uh, the aim of uh, winning games with a lot of Swedish players and also the uh, sort of financial restrictions that we will be under. Therefore, it seems like a decent decision to build the team around academic products and Swedish signings. The squad seems like a fairly solid one, uh, even though I see a potential problem with the best players being on loan from other clubs and not being our own. There's not a single Swede here neither, so, but I guess that, that will be a later problem for us. If we manage to uh, check off step 1, 2, 4, I think that the final steps, the number 5 and number 6, will perhaps not happen by themselves but we will at least have put ourselves in a good position to reach these as well. Ideally we would like to gain promotion back to the second Bundesliga as soon as possible to start building a team that could uh, compete for a Bundesliga position and also try to really find uh, high quality Swedes to bring into the team. So all in all we will have five seasons to reach uh, these aims and the ultimate goal is of course to recreate that unique 2003 feat and win a Bundesliga game with six Swedish players in the starting 11. 
and I think that it will be a really fun uh, sort of challenge. Uh, I hope that this sort of backstory has uh, got your interest up for this save. Hi, McLean FM here under my infamous flight of stairs. I really appreciate that you took the time to watch this episode that I had a lot of fun recording. I hope that you liked it and if you did, I'd appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and gave me a thumbs up because that helps me out a lot. Uh, there are new episodes out on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays and then we also have the occasional stream on Twitch on Tuesdays or Thursdays. And during the weekend, I have sort of a weekly summary uh, blog post coming out. Uh, I know it's an ambitious project, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I hope that you will too. Links are in the description and on michelinofm.com if you want more information. And before I leave you, I have a few words to say. You are appreciated. You are beautiful. And have a good day. Until I see you next time. Auf Wiedersehen.